All right, today we are looking at scientific notation and the metric system, so more numbers, yay! How wide is our universe? Um, that's a lot of zeros, this many miles. Um, go ahead and count the number of zeros for me. How many zeros do we have here? This is in decimal notation when the numbers get this big it's easier to write them in scientific notation. I don't want to write this many zeros, so let's look at how we can shorten this. Scientific notation allows us to shorten big numbers like that. It's expressed in this format, a times 10 to the n, where a is a number between 1 and 10, and n is an integer. We'll practice this and we'll make sense of what all this means. So. Where is the decimal now? Back to this number. I'm going to put it right here. That's where the decimal is, right at the very end. Where would you put the decimal to make this number between 1 and 10? So I think I should put it over here between the two. let's go ahead and do that let's move the decimal place and how about you count for me and count how many places do you need to move this decimal to get it all the way over here so let's count together one two three four five six 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 spots total. Now we want to express this in scientific notation. So we're going to take that. How about you try to figure this one out, actually? Alright, so we take that first part that's between 1 and 10, the 2.1, multiplied by 10, and then the exponent is just how many places we move the decimal. So that's going to be our answer here. Let's keep it going. So express a small number in scientific notation. So same thing, we want to move the decimal to make it between uh, 1 and 10. So what number would we end up with if we move that decimal? Okay, so if you move that decimal correctly, we're going to get 9.02. And then we want to count. How many places did we move that decimal? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we moved it eight places. When the number is less than 1, if it's a small number, the exponent's going to be negative. So now we want to put that all together. Go ahead and write this number in scientific notation. Nine point zero two times 10 to the negative eighth. All right, let's keep it going. How about we do one more practice here? Write this number in scientific notation. All right, it's a big number, so we can already eliminate these first two answers. Now it's just a matter of figuring out how many spots we moved it. So one, two, three, four spots. It's going to be answer choice C. Okay, 1.8 so now that we know how to write scientific notation, we can also expand numbers. And again, that's just a matter of moving the decimal place. So if it's a negative number, we're going to move the decimal to the left. We want to make it into a smaller number. So go ahead and write this number in decimal notation.
one, two, three, four. So I gotta add a few zeros. So that's our final answer, 0 0.0018. And then if we want a big number like this, we're gonna move the decimal to the right and make it into a big number. So go ahead and answer this one. What's the number we're gonna get here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Four, five, six. So that's going to be four, five, eight, zero, 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 zero. Okay, and that's our final answer for that. On a graphing calculator, you would use that little caret button or exp button, uh, depending on your calculator. So I would type 4.58 times 10 to the sixth power. Okay, we're gonna have to do some calculations in this class involving um, scientific notation. And so for most of you, you should be typing this into your calculator. So go ahead and try that out. And let me know, what did you get? All right, I got this number. And now we wanna write that in scientific notation. So what do you think? Notice I only use two sig figs because our original numbers here only had two significant figures. So that's why it's 2.8 and we can just cut off all the rest of those numbers. Okay, some more practice. Go ahead and try these. The answers will be on Edpuzzle. You want to quickly check. Okay, next we're gonna learn about the metric system. So here are some common units you'll see, these base units in this class, meters, liters, and grams. Um, and then all these things are basically prefixes that we might see in front of that. The most common ones are gonna be kilo, um, milli, and that's m, and you might see centi sometimes. So, why do we want to use this? This is going to help us convert between different units. And if you learn how to do this, then you don't have to do any math. So how do we do that? We take our unit where we start with. So here we start with grams. That's going to be what we call our base unit. And we're trying to convert to milligrams, which is over here. And how do we do that? All we have to do is we're gonna move the decimal place the same amount of spots that we move from grams to milligrams. So what do I mean by that? To get to grams to milligrams, I'm gonna move one, two, three spots. So I take 384. If the decimal were here, I'm gonna move it one, two, three spots. So our final answer, 384,000 milligrams. Again, I just moved the decimal spot. So 
What is this King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk business? Well, you can use this to help you remember this metric system. So K for kilo, H for hecto, D for deca, U, this is our base units, D for drink chocolate milk, deci, C for centimeters, and M for milk or millimeters. So if you can remember that, then you don't need this table. And so I highly suggest that you remember these seven letters, or you can just remember King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. So again, we're starting with 568 centimeters. So we'll go here. And we're trying to convert to kilometers, which is all the way over here. So all we have to do is count how many spots it takes to get there. So it takes one, two, three, four, five different spots away. So I'm going to take my decimal and I'm going to move it five spots. One, two, three, four, five. So our final answer here is going to be 0 0.00. All right, now that we've done a few together, uh, how about you try doing this one? Uh, just remember, King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. And that should help you figure out how many spots to move this. Um, keep in mind DM, this is gonna be DA. So this one is deci. So this one we're looking at decimeters and we're trying to move it to hectometers. So go ahead and try to do this conversion. One, two, three spots to the left. So 0 0.333 hectometers is our final answer. A couple more examples. Uh, again, just remember, King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. The first D is DA. So how can you remember that? These numbers are smaller and we know that decimals are usually small numbers. Numbers on the left are bigger. So go ahead and try this one. So from milliliters to deciliters, that's one, two, three, four spots. My final answer A couple more examples here. Go ahead and try this one. So grams are going to be here. That's our base unit with no prefixes. And we're going to move it one, two, three spots to the right. So our final answer is going to be 890 milligrams. Again, one, two, three. All right, and lastly, we've got meters to kilometers. So King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. That's going to help us. Our meters, we start here and we're trying to get to kilometers. So what's going to be our final answer? All right, we want to move our decimal three spots to the left. So it's going to be zero, zero. So I'm going to add more zeros here. One, two, three. So 0 0.000594 kilometers. All right, and that should be it.